What do you call this as a robbery? Any of you, this move, and I'll execute every mother <laughs> last one of you. Some of the most iconic moments in the history of cinema come from pairing the right piece of music with the right scene. And often when doing this correctly, it becomes so ingrained in our minds that we can no longer separate the two. Think of Kubrick's use of also Sprock's Zarathustra in 2001 A Space Odyssey, or Coppola's use of Ride of the Valkyries in Apocalypse Now. These moments are elevated to something beyond what each individual component can offer on their own. After all, that's what movies are all about. With exception to TV or video games, film is the only medium of art that can combine music with visuals in this way. And there are few filmmakers that can match Quentin Tarantino when it comes to choosing the right soundtrack to fit a scene. It's a big part of what I do, and I, I think it's a um, it's a big part of the 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 fun of modern movies, of modern cinema. And when I say modern, I mean uh, to some degree starting with uh, Rock Around the Clock played and a Blackboard Chumming a little bit more normal, and now it's very normal. Is to have modern pop songs in your uh, uh, in your films. And not only are they in them, like you kind of cut the scenes. Uh, to them. When you do it right, and the music and the movie kind of goes in sync with each other and for a sequence or so, it's just kind of like you're flying or you're skating or something. The right blend of visuals and music can serve as a tool for character development giving us a glimpse into a character's personality based on the music they listen to, or it can be used to help establish the setting and the atmosphere surrounding that time and place. Through use of both diegetic and non-diegetic music, often borrowed from classic films that inspired him, the unique personality of each of his films is reflected in the soundtrack. Sometimes the choice is an obvious one, like the title track for Django Unchained that was lifted from the Sergio Corbucci film Django or borrowing a track from the 1973 Pam Greer cult classic, Coffee, for a scene in Jackie Brown. But I think some of his best choices aren't always immediately obvious, like the use of Charles Bernstein's score from the film White Lightning in Inglorious Bastards. But then there's the opening theme song to White Lightning, and I just remember that opening was just very, very, very haunting. I thought it was terrific. And I go, hey, that, that could be not a theme for the bastards per se, but something that would be really interesting to show them doing their thing and to play this twangy, country, haunting theme in the middle of a World War II movie that takes place in, in, in uh, France. I thought it was a neat thing. It was brought, brings the Americanness. It kind of almost acts as an uh, echoing theme for uh, Aldo because he's from the South. There's a sinister quality to that theme from White Lightning. And I like the fact that there's, there's a sinister quality uh, underscoring the bastards and what they do. One of the things that Tarantino is known for is his ability to blend genres and tones seamlessly. Whether that's creating a spaghetti western set during World War II or combining a slasher flick with the classic car movies of the 1970s, he always finds a way to mash together tones and styles that you don't normally see in the same movie. One of the reasons that his genre blending works so well is his use of soundtrack to dictate the emotions that he wants you to feel. I, I feel like I'm the orchestra conductor and the audience's reaction are my orchestra and you're, you're, the sounds you make are my instruments and your feelings are my instruments. So it's like laugh, 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 stop laughing. Stop laughing. Okay, now be horrified. Be horrified. This is horrible. This is horrible. This is horrible, horrible, horrible. Laugh. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Being able to manipulate the emotions of his audience, particularly through these tonal shifts aided by the film's soundtrack, is what made him famous even all the way back with his very first film, Reservoir Dogs. The music in the movie, part of that comes from the fact that uh, in America, you know, we have a lot of oldie stations. And what they'll constantly have, like every other weekend or something, they'll have like a, a special weekend, a Motown weekend, or a, you know, a British Invasion weekend. And so I came up with the idea that the movie, since it takes place in the course of a very short time period, that it takes place while they're having a, a super 70s weekend. So they're playing all this 70s music. And it, again, it manages two things. For one thing, uh, through most of the movie, the goofiness of the song, kind of like, you know, a heavy, you know, a, you know a, a, an intense movie like this, it kind of lightens it up a little bit. 
kind of gives it a little bit of a, you know, a jab, a little wink, and it's kind of cool. It makes it kind of fun. All right. But, like, in the in the infamous torture scene, you know, uh, that everyone and his brother's talking about, um, uh, the use of, of the song uh, Stuck in the Middle with You, which is this light, bouncy, kind of cool song, all right, it not only does it not lighten up the scene, <laughs> it makes the scene even harder to watch. Because you're sitting there and you're watching it, and, and all of a sudden this, this tune comes on, and you're like, oh yeah, you the guitar's playing. Kind of tapping your toe, it's real catchy and everything, and then, you know, Michael starts doing his little dance, you know, and I defy anyone to watch Michael do his little dance, and I get a kick out of it, because he's just having a blast, you know? And then, boom! You know, heart stops. All right. And you're like, you're sitting there watching that, but it's too late. You're already a co-conspirator. Enjoy the song, enjoy the dance. Now you gotta take the heart stuff. It's the sort of creative choice that would never occur to most people to make, but once seeing it in the film, I defy anyone to argue that it wasn't the perfect song to fit that scene. Which is exactly what a film soundtrack should be. Something that fits so perfectly you couldn't imagine any other piece of music in its place. All too often in films or television, I find that the music isn't really doing anything. It's just sort of there to add some sort of background pulse to a scene, even when the scene would work just as well without any music. And sometimes a scene works better precisely because it doesn't have any music. In every Tarantino film to date, he manages to find the perfect balance knowing exactly when and when not to use music. And when a certain scene would work better with music, he always finds the perfect track. Quentin Tarantino is widely known for his encyclopedic knowledge of films, having seen thousands of films from every era, country, genre, but by all accounts his knowledge of music isn't far behind. He keeps mental notes of all of his favorite film scores or his favorite pop songs, and when the opportunity arises, he puts them to good use. There's all these songs and pieces of music or songs that I you know, hear over the course of time and think, oh, this would be a good driving song for some movie. Oh, this would be a good dance song mm. for some movie. For an opening credit sequence, this would be great for a closing credit sequence. This would be great for a, 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 an entrance, like what you're talking about. I'll, I'll hear these things, and then they're just in the back of my mind, as far as like, okay, look for an opening for those one of these days, you know? And, uh, and so whenever I, I come up with a story and I, want, I start diving into my record collection, trying to find the beat or the rhythm of my movie, and then I just start diving into it and more like research until I start finding stuff. Instead of just throwing something in after the fact, often an entire scene is written, shot, and edited with that song in mind, giving us some of the most iconic and memorable scenes of his career. Because in Tarantino's own words, If you put the right piece of music with the right scene, the right sequence, then I actually truly think it's maybe the most cinematic thing you can do. Thank you to Pedal for sponsoring this video. Pedal is a credit card company started by people who were sick of credit card companies. Building credit is an important part of our society that can be tough to navigate, but your credit score will determine what sort of loans you can qualify for, which will affect anything from student to homeowner loans, so building a good credit score earlier on in life is crucial when it comes to those big decisions. Pedal takes a modern approach to building credit, with zero fees and a cashback rewards program that gives you money back for making your monthly payments on time. You don't need a credit history to apply, so it's great for those just starting out, but it's also something worth looking into even for those who have already established a credit history. Pedal is partnered with WebBank member FDIC who issues the Visa credit card. As of today, their variable APRs range from 15.24% to 26.24%, and with an incredibly intuitive website and mobile app that lets you track your spending and even predict your interest, with the Pedal card, managing your credit has never been easier. Head over to pedalcard.com slash filmradar to check it out for yourself. That's P-E-T-A-L card.com slash filmradar. 